Okay. I think we can start. As Ilya promised, I will be speaking about GraphQL. And it's the first GraphQL talk for today, but we will have more with you, Hoff. And let me introduce myself first. My name is Natalia Tepluhina, and I'm Vue official community partner, and probably I'm the single speaker speaking about Vue today. But does anyone use Vue in production? Oh, <laughs> thank you. I, I'm not so alone now. I'm also a CTO of Vixens. It's an organization, it's a diversity organization teaching Vue.js to women. And I've just become a senior front-end engineer at GitLab. So, first question is intuitive, what is GraphQL? GraphQL part is kind of confusing here because it makes people think it's something about databases, like SQL. But in fact, QL means only a query language. And actually, the GraphQL is a query language for your API. In a nutshell, GraphQL is just a syntax that describes how to fetch data from your server. Okay, it's nice, but why should they care about it? As a front-end developer, probably you need to learn a lot of stuff every day like a lot of new frameworks, new libraries, new technologies, like everything, something new. And we already have a syntax to fetch data from your backend, you know, it's REST API. It's nice, it's working. Why should they care about learning some GraphQL? But in fact you should, because GraphQL has many awesome features and it's superior to REST API in a lot of points. And I will try to answer this question in my talk. So first, and the most important feature of GraphQL, from my point of view, is get exactly what you need. In GraphQL, you can form a response with a request. So you can see here, we have a query for an author's array, and we're fetching only a name of each author. Probably it's enough for us, maybe we need only a name here. But what if we need an age? It's simple. You don't need to add an additional endpoint because GraphQL has a single endpoint for all your queries. You need just to change your request. You need just to add a simple property age and if your schema allows it, you will fetch an age immediately. To understand the difference with the REST API, Let's compare both APIs on a GitHub. Because GitHub has a REST API and has a GraphQL API as well. It's version 3 and version 4 of GitHub APIs. Let's imagine we have a user on GitHub. And we want to fetch all user repositories. And for every repository, we want to get the languages user used in it and the forks. So first step, in the REST API, of course, it's just fetching a list of repositories of the user. And you can see these dots here. These dots mean the response is really huge. I've shown only three properties from the JSON. But in fact, this response has over than 100 properties. It's a huge JSON. And it's the first issue. It's overfetching. Because the REST API has a static response. And you probably need only a name of repository, maybe an ID, but you will be fetching these hundreds of properties and it's a traffic. And, but the problem is it's not only overfetching. We still need languages and we still need forks. And we're not fetching it with this request because GitHub will return only a URL for the languages and URL for forks. And to get languages, you will need to iterate through the array of repos. And for every repo, you will need to fetch languages with another endpoint, you see it here. And again, for every repo, you will need to fetch forks. So it's three different endpoints and many, many requests to your API. Let's compare it to the GraphQL. 
here you can see the GraphQL query. Okay, the font is probably really small, but you get the idea. You form the single query to the GitHub GraphQL API. You're fetching repositories with the name of repo. And for every repository, you just edit the property forks and languages. And first, here is a parameter because GitHub will return paginated data, but you can like fetch up to 100 results here. It's great. No overfetching, no underfetching. You're getting only what you need at this moment of time. Next great feature about GraphQL is you can use many resources on single request. You can use GraphQL as a data layer. And GraphQL will care about fetching data from your backend resources. Maybe it's some database, maybe it's some microservice, maybe it's Elasticsearch, whatever. It could be even a REST API. And it will package it in the GraphQL form and will send it to your client. So your client doesn't know anything about these backend resources. GraphQL will care about it. And why is it great? Imagine you have a project with a big, large, huge REST API. And you, of course, you cannot just simply migrate to GraphQL. You cannot just get rid of REST API and start writing GraphQL from scratch. But you can create a GraphQL wrapper that will fetch data from the REST and form it into the GraphQL. So you can do a nice, smooth migration. So every GraphQL service defines a set of types. And this set of types will describe all the data you can <laughs> fetch from this service. It's named schema. And all queries will be validated and will perform against this schema. And this schema is built with its own GraphQL simple language. It's called Schema Definition Language, or SDL. And it's strongly typed, as Alia mentioned. Let's have a look at some simple examples of GraphQL types here. So basic example, just present a type user, which has two fields. It's a name, it's string, and age with an integer. An exclamation mark here means both these fields are required. You cannot create a user if you don't provide name and age. You can also have another optional fields, but these ones are required. Of course, you can have a type relationship. So here is a type comment, which has a title, it's a string again, but it also has an author. And author has a type user from our basic example. You can do a really deep nesting of types in GraphQL, but every single type at some moment of time should resolve into scalar types. They are really basic to GraphQL and they are pretty intuitive. It's integer, float, string, boolean, and ID, where ID is just a unique identifier. It shouldn't be human readable. It's just a key to a type. Of course, most types in GraphQL are just normal object types, as you can see here, but there are some specific ones. And first one is query. Every GraphQL schema should present at least one query, and query is, well, it's a query. It's similar to REST get response. You're fetching data from your GraphQL endpoint with the queries. Next one is mutation. And mutation is similar to all the post, put, and update queries in REST API because if you need to change something, you will use mutation. You need to create something, update something, or delete. It will be a mutation. And third one is really interesting. It's subscription. Subscription is a GraphQL analog of WebSocket. You are subscribing to some event in your API. And when this event is happening, so let's imagine someone creates new command, you will get a notification. And you can react to this notification in your front end. It's like imagine the Twitter and you will get a notification about like. Okay, it sounds probably pretty complicated, so let's have a look at GraphQL queries and mutations. 
Okay, I hope font will be big enough. Please tell me, is it readable for everyone? I will just type something. Okay, so let's create a query. First of all, what is it? It's called Prisma Playground, and it's a graphical interface for the GraphQL. There are some of them. There is a GraphQL, there is a Prisma, and you can like test your queries here, you can test responses, and the best part, it's self-documented. Because you see this nice green schema button, and if you open it, you can see all the queries and mutations for this GraphQL service. So we have two queries here. Let's check the first one, it's all heroes. And you see it's a simple query that will return an array of the type view hero. And every view hero has five properties. Two of them are required, and rest are just simply optional. Let's fetch some view heroes. Let's type query and give it a name. And at first, we want just to fetch an ID and probably a name. Let's run it. And you can see we have an array of view heroes and everyone is like having ID and name. Exactly what we want to get. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know you probably see the mistake here, but we will fix it soon. Okay, let's add a Twitter. Maybe we need Twitter for some reason and run it again. And you see responses changed. Twitters are here. Of course. Every query can have some parameters, similarly to the REST query as well, so we want to fetch a single query, not an array. You can always, remember, you can always go to schema and check what's the query and what do you need to perform it. So you see, get hero right now is requiring a parameter. You cannot just fetch a hero without it. Let's try to delete the name. First of all, you probably see the linting. It's like, okay, expected name. If you try to run it anyway, it's not running. Let's put the name back. And see, we're fetching a hero with an ID, and again, we can change the body of the response and get some heroes again. Awesome. The next thing is a mutation. Okay, we have some heroes. Maybe we want to add some more. And again, you can check schema about mutation. So add hero will require a hero input. And hero input is documented as well. You can see everything you need in the documentation. So we need a hero. We need to provide at least a name to create a hero. Let's try to do it. We are providing a hero with a name test hero. Let's run it. Okay, we have an ID. Let's go back to our query and run it one more time. And you see, now we have a new field here. It's our test hero. So it's like totally interactive. You can play it, you can change your API with it, and it's great. Okay, let's go to Apollo client. Of course, you can use GraphQL on your front end without any clients. But it's similarly if you use vanilla JavaScript right now without any framework, without any library. It's just simpler and more convenient to use clients. And the most popular ones are Relay by Facebook or Apollo, which is open sourced. Apollo client is great. It's really simple to get started. You will see in the live demo part, it's like you will need about 10 minutes to understand what is happening here. Apollo provides DevTools. And it's a great thing because I, I love to have DevTools for everything. If I do React, I will probably have React DevTools. If I do Vue, I will have Vue DevTools and we have a DevTools for Apollo. You can see your queries, mutations, you can see Apollo cache here and you can understand what is happening. Apollo is universally compatible. It has a lot of integrations for different frameworks, not only for Vue or React, it has like probably even for Ember. But to say more, 
it's not only about web, it has integration for native platforms as well. So you can use GraphQL whenever you want. Let's have a look at the view integration of Apollo and GraphQL. To do so, we have View Apollo plugin by Guillaume Cho, and you can go risky and try to implement it manually, and there are some steps to do so. So first one is install all dependencies, and yeah, there are a lot of dependencies here, but view related is just the first one. Rest is just Apollo related and GraphQL. Then you will need to import everything to a main.js file. You will need to create an HTTP link and specify your GraphQL endpoint here. And then you can create an Apollo client with this link. With a cache, I will show cache in the live demo. And of course, you will want to connect to DevTools. Then you can create an Apollo provider and inject your Apollo and this provider to our view instance. But it seems overcomplicated. And if you use Vue CLI in your project, you can go much simpler way. You can just type view at Apollo. And you will be prompted if you want to have example component, if you want to have a GraphQL server, if you want to have like everything, it will modify your, your project, it will change your main.js file, it will change your app view, and you will have an immediate support of Apollo in your application. Let's have a look at this application. Okay, tricky time. Let's go to the live demo. And let me just share everything. Okay. So we still want to fetch some view heroes. And right now we have zero of them. Apollo is integrated, but we have no queries. Let's try to create our first Apollo query inside of your application. Okay, <laughs> once again, is font of the editor readable? Okay. So first thing we need to create is actually a query constant. It will be const all heroes query. And please mention this GQL here. This function from GraphQL tag will parse the string and will convert it to GraphQL query. And what is a query actually? It's our well-known all heroes, but I want to add some properties here. I want to have also a GitHub and an image of a hero. Okay. We can simply copy paste it from our playground and paste it here. Now we have all heroes query constant and we want to somehow tell our application to fetch these heroes. To do so, we have a new property in our view instance. It's, provides with, it's provided with view Apollo and it's actually an Apollo property. You see, we already initiated an empty array of all heroes and we're going to fill it with the results of the query. So we want to add all heroes property to Apollo and we need to specify a query here. And this query is our constant. Awesome. Let's have a look at the application now. You don't <laughs> need to refresh it, but you see we have a lot of heroes here and we also have some wrong heroes because they are definitely heroes, just not in the view scope. And we have also our test hero because we edited it from our playground. And probably we want to delete some. Let's try a mutations inside of your application. So let's go here. Oh, and I forgot to show you something. It's a great part. Okay. No, not my downloads. <laughs> okay, it's not opening, but fine. Let's go with 
all good stuff, like with an inspect, and finally open the DevTools. And you can see here we have, I will probably increase it a bit, and there are an Apollo DevTools here, and here is a GraphQL interface. It's really little here, I know, probably not clearly visible, but you can run your queries right here. You don't even need a playground. You can do it exactly in your browser console. You can check all your queries you have here, and we have only one for now. It's all heroes. And the best part, you have a cache. Apollo provides caching your data, caching the result of your queries, so you don't need to fetch data every time. It will just check a cache, and you, if you already have a result, it will be used in your application. So we have a root query here, and we have an array of few heroes, and you can check everything that is in your cache. Okay, let's go back to our mutations, and let's create one. So we want to delete a hero. And we're writing a mutation for this, so we are deleting hero, and, and what? Let's check a schema. We need to specify something. Uh, schema is kind of broken, but okay. There is a mutation delete hero, and you need to provide a string. It's a name to specify what hero you want to delete. Okay, so name is test hero. Let's run it, and we see delete hero is true. No errors, so we probably deleted it. Let's go here and refresh, and okay, test hero is gone. So we can use this mutation in our view app. Again, we are creating a constant. which is equal to the GQL parsed string. And now we already have a method here. You see it's like, it's an empty now, but it's bound to the delete button in every hero instance. So let's go and think about it. We are deleting test hero, so the name is hard-coded. We are deleted test hero every time. We don't want to have such a behavior, we want to pass a name to the mutation. So we need to specify some variables for it. We will give mutation name, and here you can specify any variables that mutation will expect from you. We are expecting the name variable, and it's a string, and it's required in our schema, so we need to save this behavior inside of your application. And we're deleting the hero with a past name. Okay, now we can go to our method and start mutating our API. We will use this Apollo mutate because we want to run the mutation only in the method, not on the start of application, so we are not providing any mutations in our Apollo. Again, we will need to specify the mutation we want to run. And it's our delete hero mutation, but here we have variables. So we need to add a variables property. And we have the single variable, it's a name. And with, with the ES6 syntax, we don't need to write name to dots name, it's just a name, okay? Let's go here, I will refresh it, and let's delete John Papa. Sorry, John. Okay, let's refresh it and check. And yeah, John Papa is gone and it's still cool, yeah? <laughs> you don't like John Papa, yeah? <laughs> and we still have Dan here. So it's cool, he's deleted, but it's not really interactive. You deleted it, you sent a request to the server and it's deleted from your API, but Probably you want it to be more interactive. You want to delete and 
he should disappear immediately, not after the page refresh. The good thing about Apollo, you can do it. Because you can check your cache, you can change the data in your cache, and you can update it with the new data. So we need to provide an update callback to our mutation. It requires a single parameter, it's a store, and the store is actually the GraphQL Apollo cache. Just to remind you, it's, oh, yeah, just go to the Apollo. It's right here. You can always check your cache with your DevTools and understand what is happening here and what do you want to change. So. First thing we want to do, we want to read this cache and save it to some variable, and we will later deal with this variable in our code. So let's name it data, and it will be equal to store read query, and the query is, is our familiar all heroes query. So what are we reading here? We will fetch all the root query. It will have a single property. It will be all heroes. And we can do something to this array. OK. Now we need to find what hero we are deleting. We have a name. So it's really simple. So const hero to delete is our data, all heroes. Remember, you have a property all heroes. Data is not equal to all heroes. It will contain all the queries you have. And we will looking for a hero. And find the hero whose name is equal to the past name to the delete hero method. OK, great. We found the hero we want to delete. But we still need. Okay, sorry for this. We still need to find it in array. We found it, and we want to delete it finally. So, our data, all heroes, slice, and we want to find data, all heroes index of the hero, and we want to delete it. So, splice method probably is really intuitive. It will just delete the single element, starting from the index of hero to delete. And the last operation here is we need to write this data back to our cache. So we need to make store, write query. And again, we need to provide a query here. But there is an additional parameter here. We need to specify data we want to pass to write query. So what to override? OK. Let's hope it works. I'm like praying inside right now, because live code intends to fail every time. So let's refresh our application and try to delete Dan Abramov. Yay, he is deleted. So you can see it's really simple to mutate a state from the delete hero. And good thing about Apollo cache is you can also use it to manage your local application state. So it can replace Vuex, it can replace Redux, it can replace any state management you choose. I won't cover this in my talk, but just keep it in mind. You can always check it in the documentation. It's really great. So that's just probably. Oh, OK, it's a project repository for Vue Heroes. It's a, actually, it, it's interesting because it's a starting branch. It doesn't contain any queries or mutations, just a boilerplate for you to play. And you can play to tr trying to add a hero, not only a delete. Probably you have your own heroes to add. Thank you for your time and attention. Do you have, <laughs> Do you have any questions?
Uh, what part? The backend part of the Oh, sure. Uh, actually, it's in this repository. There is a link, and I will share slides in the Twitter, like, immediately with the conference tag. Because there is only one hero here with the setter name, that's why we're using find instead of filter. Filter will, will return an array, but for in our case it will be an array of one element, so filter is kind of obsolete here. You can use a find. Yeah? Yeah. If you have a subscription, they will change a cache. So if you have a change from server side with a subscription, probably because it's the only way to change your cache from the server. You have a subscription, you subscribe to an event, and it will change your cache. I don't hear, sorry. Could you please reuse the mic box? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can always approach me after my talk and ask privately so I will answer. It probably will be easier. <laughs> and speaking about the code, I can probably give a very quick Sorry, demo. Sorry, can I ask again? Okay. <laughs> okay. So if we have any changes in the backend side, and we don't know in the front end that we have the changes. Mm -hmm. So the other clean made it. And we read the data from the cache. How we handle that changes from the server? How do we get that that has changed? Ilya already shown it because you can have a script of introspection of schema. You can fetch the schema back to your front end application and validate queries against it. Okay, thank you. And okay, I will probably just very quick show the Apollo server. So if you go to the repository I've shown, you will find an Apollo server here. And here is the famous GraphQL schema. It's defined by me. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> it's really nice. So you have only a schema and you need to have a resolvers, obviously. I'm using just a simple low DB implementation. So it's not a database, it's just a text file here. And resolvers are just, you can see they are just taking the database and finding the hero. And of course, for mutation, we are just, there is a add hero mutation and you again, you're getting your database heroes, you're pushing your hero and write it back. So it's really simple. Okay. No more questions. Thank you one more time. <laughs>